one of my first takeaways was we are not our thoughts. You guys have maybe heard this before. Other people talk about it, but I definitely experienced it firsthand. And I kind of briefly touched on it earlier. Is like our thoughts uh, come and go wherever they come from. We're, we're not in control of our thoughts. Our brains, our subconscious minds just shoot thoughts into our minds. And we then have the power and the control to do with those thoughts whatever we wish. We can think about them. We can ignore them. We can tell people about it, whatever. Um, but we, at the end of the day, we are not our thoughts. And in that moment, from mile 70 to 83, when I kept wanting to quit, I wanted to quit so bad, it hurt so bad, those thoughts just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. They're all these thoughts. But I chose to not think about them as much. I chose to think about the positive ones. I chose to think about them from more of an objective perspective. Uh, so I just, I just love the idea that our thoughts don't define us. We are not our thoughts. We have the power to think about our thoughts however we want to. Um, there's a difference between thinking and thoughts. Uh, the next lesson I learned was presence is essential. Being present, being in the moment, being where your feet are, I think that's that's almost everything with these races because if you're not here, if you're not being present, where else are you? You're thinking about how many miles you still have left. You think, you're thinking about how many miles you've already ran. Oh my gosh, I've already ran 30 miles. My legs are so beat. They're so tired. Oh my gosh, I still have 45 miles to run. I'm so t- I'm, I'm How am I going to run 45 more miles when I've already ran 30 miles? Like You're just in this weird space that's not here. But when you're here in this exact moment, that's all you can think about. There's no room for anything else. When you are right here, you're thinking about right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. I am here on this trail right now. That's all I'm doing. And I think when you're in that present moment, it's impossible to quit. It's impossible to stop. It's impossible to fail because you're only in that moment. You have no other capacity to think about anything else. I think inevitably you're going to prop your mind's going to drift um, at some point. But the goal, I think, is to be in the present moment as much as possible. And when I found myself mile 70 to 83, wanting to quit in that really low moment, I had to keep telling myself, okay, just be present. Just be here right now. Be where your feet are. Be here now. That's what I kept telling myself. Those three words. Be here now. Powerful statement. Powerful combo of three words. And um, I don't know where it came from. Maybe I read it somewhere. I don't know. But be here now became my mantra for that section. And um, when you're when you're just here in the present moment, you can't be anywhere else. Um, third lesson I learned is nothing is permanent. Uh, this is, these are all kind of tied together, but those those negative thoughts, those negative feelings, the pain in your legs, nothing is permanent. Nothing will ever stay the same. That's how the world works. That's how life works. Uh, my legs were in probably the worst pain ever just five days ago. And now I'm sitting here talking to you and I feel fine because nothing is permanent. Uh, when I felt really shitty at mile 20 because it was so hot and I was starting to cramp, look at how I felt just a few hours later once the temperature went down and I cooled off and I felt fine. Uh, nothing is permanent. And I think in an ultra marathon, it's so easy when you get into a bad state and you just start thinking, oh, like for some reason your brain just thinks, this is how I'm going to feel forever. This is how I'm going to feel the rest of my life, the rest of this race. But it's so not true. Nothing's permanent. You have so many ups and downs in a race like this. So just know that when you are feeling down, that at some point you will feel better again. You're going to feel up again. And uh, same thing for the ups. Like I don't think you should lean too far into the good feelings because just as quick as they came, they're probably going to go away and you're going to feel down again. And so it's all about just riding the waves. You have to ride the waves as they come. Think about yourself out on the ocean. You can't fight the waves. If you fight the waves, you're going to get capsized. And uh, that's what happens during an ultra marathon. You have to just be a boat out in the ocean, bobbing and weaving, taking the ebbs and flows as they come. And you're kind of just this like passenger on the ups and downs. And uh, that's how I think you can get through a lot of these difficult long races. Fourth thing I learned is pain is just a feeling. And what I mean by that is everybody has their own relationship with pain. And I'm speaking about physical pain. Um, 
Obviously, physical pain is what you feel the most during an ultramarathon. The pain in your legs, in your feet, in your toes, wherever. And uh, that pain, it's simply a feeling. Uh, like if, for example, if my legs are just hurting so bad, it doesn't mean I'm injured. It's not like I'm going to feel that pain tomorrow. Uh, but that's just the pain that I happen to be feeling now. And it's, it's just like when you, for me, when I've understood, when I've come to understand that pain is a feeling, um, and then when I realize that we can control our feelings, we can control how we feel, you can kind of just take that pain and not think about it. You can, again, I, I think pain is also a thought in, in, in some sense of like, when you feel pain, it is simply a signal your brain is sending out into your body. And, or maybe it's the other way around. Your body is sending a signal up to your brain, but it's just a thought. And you don't have to pay attention to that thought. You don't have to indulge and give into that thought. You can just say, okay, my legs are tired. That's fine. I'm going to keep going because that's simply how my legs feel right now. But that doesn't mean I have to feel that way. Um, I haven't fully been able to put this into words yet, but um, that, that phrase of pain is just a feeling gets me through a lot uh, because feelings are temporary. Feelings are not permanent. Feelings come and go. And when you realize that pain is just another one of those feelings, it seems to make it more um, more understandable and more uh, it, it's easier to get through it because you understand like, oh, it's just a feeling. And the final lesson I learned, um, I guess this is kind of multiple things in one, but your feet, your stomach, your effort level, your mindset, and your crew, those five things I think are the most important things to manage from a physical, tactical standpoint in a race. So your feet, huge. You're on your feet. I took 208,000 steps. You got to take care of your feet, lube them up, wear cotton or uh, uh, wool toe socks like I did, um, manage your shoes, figure out all this in training, manage your feet. Feet are huge. Stomach, again, fortunate enough to not really have any stomach issues. Um, Got to manage your stomach, figure out your nutrition early on in your training, practice with it, try a million different things, try solid foods, try liquids, try gels, whatever you got to do to figure out your stomach. Effort, effort level, effort, uh, like RPE received or uh, um what does RPE stand for? I don't have a brain fart. Um, rate of perceived exertion. I'm sorry. This is how much effort you're exerting in any at any given point in time. A 100-mile race is so long. If you're coming from marathons, a 100-mile race is 20, 30, 40 times harder, and it feels 20, 30, 40 times longer. Um, so managing your effort level, obviously you can't go out running a 100-mile race at like 80% effort level, you're going to smoke yourself. You got to go out at like 50%, like five out of 10 RPE. You got to find that effort level that you can manage for a long period of time, 24 hours, 30 hours, however long your race is. Um, so managing effort and figuring that out during training, testing things, test when you push too hard. What, what does that feel like when you're test, when you finish a long four hour training run and you feel great, think about how hard you were pushing during that, that effort, during that training run. Um, and then mindset mindset. I mean, that's what I've talked about the most during this, uh, podcast is just plan ahead, forward think to any possible scenario, work things out in your head ahead of time. Uh, do things like a cold plunge or do things daily that are going to trigger that fight or flight response. And you learn to, to control it and manage it. Um, and then lastly is crew. Again, you can do these things without a crew, but having a crew that is all on the same page, like I made this PDF of everything I could possibly think of that the crew might need to know, turn-by-turn turn directions, GPS coordinates, what I need at each aid station, what time I think I'll be there, all these different things. Have that lined out. And then also a very, very, very important thing to tell your crew, which I told my crew before this race, I don't care how bad I look. I don't care how bad I say I want to quit. As long as I am not physically injured or my health is at risk in some way, do not let me quit. Just tell me I look good. Tell me I'm looking strong. Tell me I, I can keep going. Do not let me quit. I've been on crews where 
the the crew has like an emotional or family connection to the runner and they see them in pain and they're like oh my gosh you you don't look very good you you should we should maybe talk to somebody maybe talk to the the medical people see if you need to get looked at like you're just you're looking really beat down you don't need to do this you don't have to do this race it's you can stop now it's going to be okay we'll still love you screw that (laughs) get your crew on the page of i don't care again unless i'm physically injured or my health is at risk, do not let me quit this race. I don't care how bad I'm negotiating with you. Do not let me quit. Um, because 99% of the time, you're going to be fine, and you can get through the race, but you got to make sure your crew is on the same page. So feet, effort, mindset, and crew, those are the five most important tactical things that I think you should be prepared for uh, for your 100-mile race. Mm-hmm.